for joining us. It's a quick broadcast here, just a quick broadcast. What a game, just watched the game there. Dirty, that the referee, who was he? What was his name? Do you get his name there, Tony? What a dirty, what, that tackle at the end. How wonderful and justified was that Samaras goal? Oh my goodness, that tackle by Russell Anderson. How he never get a red card for that? That was just a disgrace, absolute outrage, and the whole game was perpetrated by referees. A referee who, as usual, running about with a Rangers tap underneath his strip, I wouldn't be surprised, or a sash or something. It doesn't matter, we can't prove that, but what we can prove is once again, a Scottish SFA official destroys the game, destroys it, shameless tackles that go unpunished. A rugby tackle as described by the commentator on Celtic TV. A rugby tackle that was observed within 20 yards, or maybe less, maybe 10 yards, by a referee. Clear line of sight, nothing to impede it, because the camera had the same angle. Tripped him and pulled him down because it was in danger of still galloping away. And a yellow card. How disgraceful, shocking. But it, was, it wasn't a case of even being the last man, it was a, a tackle like that, should have been sin died. But Giorgio Samaras, get it right, fecking up you. Dirty, lousy. Well anyway, Celtic, from scoring after 12 seconds with Chrissy Commons, a magnificent start. And uh, I was in transit, I just woke up, I started watching the game, I was in transit and then by the time I went back out, we were 3-1 done. By the time I fired the stream back up after I'd did all my running about, it was 3-1 uh, down. So the comeback was magnificent. I take it it was a couple of substitutions that the, uh, Lenny made, the master technician that he is. And also to report, I saw a picture there briefly just when I was on the huddle board. I saw a picture briefly from the Corteo, from the Swallowgate up to the, the Grun earlier on. And I've never seen anything like it. There must have been about a couple of hundred people all down at the Gallagate, down at the, just before the, there's just a cross for untouchables, isn't it? They were uh, all herded in, in a big, in a big uh, circle. Shocking, shocking fascist state tactics. People walking to the game and they're herded in like cattle. Hail, hail, James. So, a wonderful victory for Celtic, justified. And uh, that tackle, that, 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 that it was just, the, the reason why I'm doing this and it was that tackle right at the end. Oh my goodness, that was just disgraceful. Have you ever seen anything like it? And Giorgio Samaras, have you ever seen anything like it? What a, what a victory. What a result, Celtic. How many games is that we need to win now? Two more games, one more game, two more games till we get the... The flag flying at Celtic Park. And all the doubters, people have had many bad things I've seen against Neil Lennon. I'll always be a supporter of Neil for what he's went through. The grass isn't always green on the other side. We only have to look back in fondness to our rubbish managers, John Barnes, Lou McCary, Joe Vengloss. Well, they were Celtic managers, so I don't want to say anything bad against them, but they weren't the best and they never won much, if anything. So, be careful for what we wish for. And yeah, sure, ain't perfect. We've lost cups all over the place. Hopefully this year we're going to redeem it. We're doing a double. A double in Champions League European progress. Sell a few of our stars and we go again. One, two, three, knock them in. Have no fear, it can be done, keep the faith. And uh, get rid of the fascist police state. No more fascist police state. Celtic fans unite. And this, against this fascist Freemasonic state. Leave the boys alone. What are they doing? What are they doing? They're, they're being hounded, hounded. Young boys, leave them alone. Polis, we can get a grip. Wonder if you'll give as much attention to loyalist parades. 
imagine herding them in like cattle, you know what I mean? Shocking, shocking tactics as usual. But it's a uh, quarter past five, quarter past five just now. And uh, this is just a quick show how you all doing. I could uh, get on the phone blower here. Should we phone a referee? We we'll phone an ex referee. I don't think I'm getting a good enough signal for it, have I? Mm. I will leave it. We'll get we'll get a we'll get a referee's opinion on it later on. Not tonight though, not tonight. I'm in a bad area, I don't think I'll be able to hold the, my wee computer's bad as it is and I don't think my dongle could hold the, the call to any great quality. So well done Celtic, well done. And my sorry referee, shove your heat up your chuffs. A magnificent comeback from 3-1 down. Mulgrew slammed the ball in the net. Hooper standing two yards away. Quickest react, header in the net, goal. And then running through, clean through, Russell Anderson like a cart horse, seen Milk turn quicker than him, and uh, made the tackle. It wasn't going to be good enough, the tackle. So he throws his hands around his waist and pulls him down. That tackle alone, red card, but no. But uh, c'est la vie, as they say. It was wonderful to hear Craigie Brown mumping and moaning and all these days in games he says I've never seen anything like it I'm not a happy man <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa Brown, Grandpa Brown you old bastard you you old Jakey, I ain't had a bottle of night yeah dirty old fucking get sorry for the language but ha 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 yes old Feather Brown is that what he gets called in the media Right, I'm away. I'm away to celebrate. I'm away to pick up a few terriers. A few funions at the ground. Commons man in a match. As I say, I missed it from, uh, I was getting ready to go out. And so up until the day, I just, by the time I got the light, we just scored the second goal. And then I got the third goal coming in. So I'd, I'd missed the, the goals that we'd lost. So yeah, I mean the Commons goal, it was wonderful, the Hooper. Hooper headed them into it and then the, the swivelling turn by, by Stokes was amazing and it laid uh, Commons in for the goal, the first goal was 12 seconds. What a way to do it, huh? Score your first goal, let them score three, and then boom, 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 one, two, three, last minute, overhead, free kick winner, and a Masonic referee, and Craigie Brown sucker punch. Here, by the way, what was the score when the man came up? I was half dozing, it was nil nil at half time and into the second half. Somebody had maybe the good news, did they get beat? Somebody had me a mate for the good news, tell me they get beat or they drew at least with, with high, high rated Elgin, high flying Elgin. Tell me Elgin held on for a draw at least. Put me out my misery, I don't even know, come on. Not that it matters anyway, what was the score by Sevkovi? Sevco, the Rangers Tribute Act. Ah, who cares anyway? Don't even want to know. Nobody tell me. Don't even tell me. That's it. They must have. Ah, here. You shouldn't even tell me. I was taking it as red. If you didn't put it down, I was taking it as red. But not to worry. That, was a, that must have been a, a highly scintillating game, that. I mean, for the bit I saw when I was lying half awake, half sleeping, trying to get my shut eye. I looked at I looked a pish poor game. Absolute chronic. High boys lumping it up high. And uh, one thing I did notice uh, was the sound volume, it sounded like it was being turned down to drown out the effects of said manky mob. I've got a lovely little microphone, maybe I should get along to a, an away game somewhere take my wee microphone and get as close to the manky mob as possible record the full 90 minutes the full song repertoire eh? and a nice wee ground because obviously these shysters in the media are turning the volume down times to support a wee local team what, what teams to Clyde did they claim Rafe Rovers 
Oh, they're too, they're too high for them, aren't they? Rafe Rovers above them. Would they when did they play Rafe? A Rafe above them. Yes, should get myself along there. Support another wee Scottish team. Support a Diddy team. I think I'll do that. Take my wee H2 Mikey thing along. A dodgy penalty, there you go. <laughs> says it all. It says it all, doesn't it? A dodgy penalty. It must have been late on, because I'm sure I was no no. Actually, what I did, I turned it around. I, I was watching it and I was half sleeping. I thought, this is a bad trip to fall asleep listening to this. So I ended up putting it on to the, the Man City. What was this Man City score? They were getting beat 1 0 by Everton, weren't it? I turned it around to that because I just couldn't be bothered with it. I couldn't be bothered with the commentator for the Mankey Mob and I couldn't be bothered. Just couldn't be bothered having my subconscious sleep permeated by the perma rage numpties from the shithouse. I couldn't date to myself. Right, I'm going to be doing a few wee quick one-off shows during the week here. Some black ops stuff with some people. So listen out for some shows later on in the week. Going to revisit a few people. Got some new, can you, mutton as well. So, 2 0 Everton. Well, that's the league over. Man, you have won another title. And uh, poor old England there. No teams in the Champions League yet, they've got three in the Europa. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Look how wonderful Celtic managed the same status above the billionaires from the Arab world and the Russian world combined ahead of them and ahead of sexy football cheating Wenger. I'll never forgive him for that time with that, with that Eduardo, whatever he was called, was it Eduardo? Never forgive him. No, i never seen it. I never, nah, can we, you'd fling shite to the moon for all your sexy fucking, your fucking football. What have you won in eight years, know what I mean? So they're Celtic, we matched Arsenal and the, the reigning, the reigning, or the, sorry, the, the champs to be of English football ahead of the European champions, ahead of uh, the current Europe, uh, uh, English champions as well. All on a shoestring, all on a cheap budget, and all the fannies and the media could concentrate on was Neil Lennon's got a sharp suit. So because he's got a sharp suit and a wee Jose Mourinho, Rob, Roberto Mancini scarf, looking at a lovely, looking like a lovely Italian, Portuguese, Irish manager there, you know, he didn't look out of place, did he, at all? And he, all they could put down is, oh, he's leaving us. Is that right? And the same week that they had sold all the Celtic players, they'd bought all the Rangers players in, or Tribute Act Rangers players in, and this is just a total travesty. Why this hasn't been picked up and highlighted anywhere, that how they can even complain about a transfer embargo when they're lining players up to be signed as free transfers from the 1st of September. Should this no be, they're not allowed to bring anyone in until the transfer window opens on the 1st of January? I would have thought that would have been a bit more better, but hey. It's another 555 country decision here. Cover your works with your Freemasonic brethren. Right, I've got work to do here. Half five and I'm sitting about talking to you, Svangitas. Let the people sing. Sack the Freemasonic state. Criminalising Celtic fans. Supporting Celtic is not a crime. They're out of order. Bang right out of order. And we stand four square Celtic Community Radio with the boys in the Green Brigade. Happy St Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Hail glorious St Patrick. God bless all Athenians all over the world. We've got a call. Thank you.
Hello? Hello? Right, as I said, I don't know if I can get this call through, bro. Let me uh, phone you back. Let's see if we can do this. Tommy, good to see you again, lad. Hello. Hi, Tommy, it's Tony Cassidy. How are you doing, pal? Not bad, mate. I'm just going to close the here to make sure. Hopefully it's coming through okay, yeah? yeah. you at game then, Tony, today, or were you? No, I wasn't at the game today. A bit skint now. Lost my job the other day, so I'm looking for another one. Sad to see, uh, sad to hear that, mate. What, what, what like, you know, uh, construction. Aye, uh, construction. A bad time, isn't it? It's a bad, it's a bad, bad time to, it's a bad time to be in the UK in this business, isn't it? In the construction business. Aye, uh, it's a wee bit flat, a wee bit flat, but I uh, keep your head up, you know, and just fire ahead, so. Uh, I got a job a few, well, a couple of months back, and it was decent money, so I uh, did that for a while, and then, and now it's coming to an end. I knew it was a short contract, so it wasn't that first, you know. I just need to look for the next thing now. But uh, I caught the match, watched the match. Did you watch it yourself? I watched up to the first half, uh, and then I had to bail out. And then, as I say, by the time I fired the stream back up, it was, it was, uh, they were just scoring the second goal. I was listening to the radio and I was trying to get the stream fired up, yeah. So it ended up, uh, I, well, I saw I saw the, the equaliser and I saw the, saw the winner. I was jumping about in my motor, giving it a yell, day like that. <laughs> Uh, it was a lovely winner, wasn't it? Beautiful. I mean, uh, thank God, big Effie can't header a boy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Ball came to the back post and he headed it. I don't know what happened. Headed it under himself or something. I don't know what's happened. But anyway, did the job. Fell to big Georgius and a beautiful finish. Lovely. I mean, the, Just, stuff, uh, the stuff that I was hearing uh, about the, the refereeing decisions, was it was it as bad as the Celtic commentator was making out in Celtic TV? Was it was some uh, of the decisions? Well, that's, uh, obviously, commentary is by Paul and, and Kenny, you know? Um, I, I mean... Paul and Kenny, I mean, they're great Celtic fans, and uh, but, I mean, they even tease each other sometimes during the commentary about, oh, you need to be a bit fair, a bit fair, and generally they call it right, of course, you know, but occasionally it's always debatable, doesn't matter who you are as a fan, you'll always question a decision, no matter, I mean, you get a thousand people in a room and they have a thousand different opinions at times, but, uh, uh, it was a few of them, certainly the, the rugby tackle in the last, in the last minute, kind of thing, the last five minutes, whatever, by your Aberdeen defender Reynolds, you know, he just, uh, I mean, I don't know what Anderson, it is. I think it was Russell Anderson, was it all? Russell Anderson, was it? Was it Russell Anderson? Aye, whoever it was. Anyway. Aye. On uh, Gary Hooper, you know. That looked like it could have been a red, I suppose. Uh, I mean, there was a couple of other Aberdeen guys getting there, whatever, but it could have been a red. I mean, it was a definite rugby tackle, so you might just give it for that alone, I don't know. But uh, anyway, all's well that ends well. We've got the three points. I don't know how far we are ahead now, but hopefully we can wrap it up shortly, shortly, you know. Yeah, it was wonderful seeing Giorgio Samaras running over a big smile with his big beard and his, his head and shoulders <laughs> hair and he put out a hand for the referee, only for the referee to take his hand and then boom, hit him with a yellow card. So he hits me a yellow card for taking off his top and celebrating for a wonderful moment that everybody was just going crazy about and he awards the same crime as uh, the rugby tackle Anderson, you can make it up. <laughs> Uh, it's a crazy rules of the game, I suppose, and also the perception of the referee. But I like the way Georgius just took the boy's hand, you know, took the referee's hand, shook his hand. I ain't no bother, ref. Three That's points, yeah, man. That's it. Beautiful. Right. And I also like the way Big Effie, I don't know if you saw it, just the passing, you know, just when, he, when we, the ball went in the goal. I think it was for the third goal, maybe. Uh, I think it was for the third goal, wasn't it? The winner. He, jumped, he also jumped on the referee, you know, he was about to say, oh, yeah, done, sir, we got, we got it, you know. So, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this team that we've got at the minute, um, we could do with a big bobo or something like that, you know, somebody solid at the back, just to get right through a few, a few people, you know. Uh, the defence, I mean, losing three goals, obviously, you need to kind of work on that. But we've had a good season, and uh, we've got, you know, some good young players coming through. I've always liked uh, your man Joe Shaughnessy. I don't know, I mean, he's absolutely brilliant. I've not seen him all that often, but I've certainly, uh, I saw him in a youth match about two years ago, you know, uh, up at uh, Barrafield, and I thought he was a good player then. I'd, you know, I mean, he's, he's only 20 and he could maybe do a job, but I don't know how much it would cost to sign him from Aberdeen or whatever, but we certainly need uh, a few big, strong players and a wee bit more skill as well. Hopefully, if we can get the league in the bag, we can get some of the young boys coming through, Baroudin and John Heron and, and obviously, I don't know, a few other ones, Paul George or whatever, you know, so 
so St. Patrick's, what are you up to for that? Are you having a, having a wee beer the night or are you just chilling out? Just no, working me, I'm, I'm out working now, working, I'm going to pick up a few people at Celtic Park soon hopefully and uh, I start my night and then work all the way through to the early hours, pick up the lovely inebriated people of Glasgow. Since I don't have a drink myself, I like to pick up the bands who do, so and I'm just going to get see all that uh, carry on this afternoon? Don't it's a picture, Bell? The only thing i seen there was a picture. Do you know anything else about it? Have you heard much on it? On I will, uh, if you just tell me, we click, uh, sorry, we look now on uh, Celtic Underground. In fact, it's just uh, following the Twitter in the last 20 minutes, whatever. Uh, Eddie's retweeted or whatever. He sent out a message about the uh, a YouTube video. We got all his taking imagery and that shows it quite well. I mean, it's a wee bit blurry in the second half, but the first half is fairly clear and that. Uh, it's all sort of, I don't know what they call it. Um, he's mentioned how, what they call it technically. Uh, some sort of, I'm looking at the Twitter now just to see what's called. Some sort of shepherding or something, whatever you call it, you know. But uh, I was basically, I mean, I was, where was I at the time? I was <coughs> heading back from a St. Patrick's Mass in the cathedral with the bishop and that, you know. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> they, um, oh, they call it kettling or something Ketling, like that. Aye, aye. Some sort of aye, European approved tactic, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, there's kids and, uh, you know, mothers and children and, and on that wee march, you know. So, But I mean, <coughs> Obviously, these marches, I mean, I've been involved in a few different types of marches across the city, and obviously the, the police usually help with these kind of things and give you permission, whatever. But, I mean, I don't see, I wouldn't see them giving permission to a, a march just prior to a Celtic game, you know. I just don't see that maybe maybe ever happening for anybody, unless it was an extremely special occasion or something, a cortege or something like that, you know, but, uh, like a funeral, I don't know, but, I mean... Because obviously traffic management and all that. So from the pe- police's point of view, they're looking for uh, public protection. But it was totally, totally over over the score of the day, man. As I say, I was over on the south side about that time, and suddenly, fo- it was actually near the govern the sorry the police station at Bella Houston Park on the Paisley Road, and about four or five police vans just suddenly started flashing their lights, doing U turns and heading onto the motorway. And I thought to myself, oh oh, here we go. This is what's happening. Sure enough, the video footage just comes through on YouTube there and. Uh, you can see them kettling or corralling all the, the uh, fans yeah. there. It's, 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 uh, it's over the top, you know. It's, it's very disappointing in today's society. And essentially, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's freedom of speech and all that. I, mean, I think exactly the police's response would always be, oh, well, public safety and you need permission and it's normal procedure and all that stuff. But certainly questions have got to be asked, you know. Um, hopefully nobody was injured or whatever, but I don't know. Did you hear any more about it? I heard, heard there was some of it. I heard there was some arrests. It was, it was just on the, the the news, just at five o'clock. That's when I'd heard it on the news. And then that's when I went on to to look at the huddle board. And I've got the I've just got somebody a uh, five page there. It was opened up about one o'clock, and it's gone all through it. Yes, uh, and it I mean, it's, showed that picture it seems of the, to be bubbling up and bubbling up. It's gone quite far now. I think maybe a year, whatever ago, they, they could have defused a lot of this by sitting around the table on a regular basis, you know, and having better communication and that kind of thing, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, this, this is a special weekend for the, for the, certainly for the Irish community, and obviously the Green Brigade with their march today, I mean, they were just speaking for the, for the fans. And, and what was it? The people or the fans who were banned uh, by the club and also by the police or whoever. Um, that's what we're kind of trying to raise awareness about and sort of protest against, whatever. So, I mean, there's also uh, there's also a march approved for speech. tomorrow. There's an a march approved to, for, for tomorrow. Some some Irish Republican members marching through from Govan, I do believe. Right, right, right. I've, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure I've seen that. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day parade. I'm sure I've seen it uh, from uh, Govan Assembly and Govan. I think for a, a twelve o'clock march. I think it's through to Glasgow. Green, I might be mistaken, I'll need to try and... Uh, well, I mean, see, the thing with that type of march was that that would probably be given official approval and that kind of thing, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, say, I don't know how the boys went about today's arrangement, but I did hear on a Celtic Dreams last night that was going ahead, and I'd heard earlier on in the week as well. So, I mean, the police are just watching all these Twitter streams coming through and following all the guys kind of thing, so, uh, you know, it's no, no surprise that there would have been a police presence today. It's like... It was a two or three weeks ago. Uh, there was a wee sort of, it was allegedly supposed to be a wee bit of a gathering in George Square prior to prior to the game or whatever, That's you know. Right, yeah. And it was supposed to be at twelve o'clock. And I went along just just you know to show a bit of presence, a bit of support to the fans. And uh, certainly there was about fifty police or more and a few cars about the place. And there was only about a handful. Of, it was probably only about twenty thirty fans, you know. And they were sort of dispersed and they kind of waited about for a while. To, 
see what was going to happen, but I ended up nothing happened. I can I just speak up out? I'm just having engine because in case my, my, my wee battery goes flat, I need to keep the engine going as well. Just too, too, right. too much electrical appliance, the tin foil covered Skoda, it drains the battery. You know, so I was just. Uh, right. <laughs> and I, I'm also. My, I mean, my, all the street lights in Glasgow dim down when you spark up your, your <laughs> laptop, and that, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy, I was wondering about your uh, Gavin Masterton investigation, your Dunfermline situation, and all that. How's that coming along? Yeah, well, I, I, I'll, go, well just, uh, I'll keep you posted soon, mate. I've got something planned, so I'll just keep you some posted. More, but, uh, uh, some more. Certainly there's been a lot more press about it. I mean, I remember I heard his name mentioned on CQ a couple of years back, whatever. Uh, that was the first I'd ever heard, but uh, certainly the mainstream seem to be asking a lot more questions as well now. So, uh, so yeah, what are you up to for the next few weeks, just ducking and diving? I mean, you got a few shows going on at 6 o'clock through the week there, but that was obviously a bit chaotic for you. You, you kind of... Just doing I'm, just a, I'm just doing a few wee things. I'm taking a step back for a wee while. Just, I'm just going uh, to... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's voluntary stuff. stuff you're doing, so, man. It's no pressure. You know, it's just whenever you want to do it. It's still quality, usually, what you produce, the information coming through and that, so... No, I just, I, I'm, going to, it, you know? I'm just going to be doing hit and run stuff for a, a wee time than now because I've got so much on that I can't avoid and I've stuff that I put off that I need to do, so... And it just... Uh, uh, so I'll be doing wee one-off shows, as I say, now and again with different people. So I've got a few things planned, a few people I'm going to phone. And uh, I'll send I'll send you a link. If uh, if you're about during the, the day and stuff, I'll, I'll send you a link for one of my, my mother wee pages and I'm doing any of the live shows as it happened. Because at the moment, nobody's listening to them as I do them live, but I'm broadcasting it anyway just to keep my heart covered. So I'll send you yourself a link. If anybody else wants a, a wee link, give me a... I think when I'll give you a shout, yeah, and I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, because I'll be doing that during the week because I've been the ones that I've been doing. As I say, I'm just going to, uh, what do you call it, cover your works. Where I'm not doing it live on this page, the one that I did there. I've got another one where it goes out live, but I'm not telling everybody about it. As I say, because it's if you if you record a phone call and then you put it out, it's uh, it's illegal, isn't it? But if you're doing a live broadcast and you phone somebody up, then it's not illegal. You know what I mean? So. I, uh, it, 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 it keeps me, it keeps me covered, to Tony. It keeps me covered. I do a live show, but as I say, what all I'm doing now, instead of doing what I used to do, I would sit there for maybe two hours or three hours and uh, just phone aye. people, you know, in, in the go, afternoon. Go the aye. Aye. So I'll do that off air, and then when I get a bite, then I record that. I'll put it on. I'll put it on on a live show. Uh, on a wee side bit, and then boom, it comes back out later on, you know, on the main bit. So. Aye. But anyway, Do you ever mate, get any flack? Do you ever get any flack off folk? And then what way? No, I mean, just come back, people heckling you, whatever, you know. I know you were speaking to a Rangers fan the other week there, whatever, you know, it was quite interesting. So, no, 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 really. Uh, on your broadcast? Really, mate, no, really. No, really, no. They've got uh, to be nice. Any... I suppose you've actually got a few compliments for the other side as well, right? <laughs> for revealing information, you know? Well, no, really, mate. I know, I, I doubt it, mate, I doubt it. But no, what do you call it? I mean, I, I just any any anybody that comes on that Twitter, I just I don't I don't want to interact I, with anybody. I'm the same. Just block them straight away, man. There's no point. If you want to talk straight, that's fine. But if you want to just be at it, forget it. You know. If somebody if somebody wants my numbers out there, if somebody wants to phone and chat and say here you're a, you're this or you're that, you're talking this nonsense or that, fine. Oh, yeah, come on here. Talk straight, yeah. Guy, come on and talk to me. There's my number. Let's talk about it. As long as they don't uh, start going on about their nonsense, right? Then I'm I'm cool about anything. If they want to come on and talk, is but doing it in 140 characters. I mean, I can't. E that's no way for uh, a debate or a thing. I can't. E de I can't e operate. The only way I can operate in that is to to just say hello to somebody or give a wee a wee opinion uh, here or there. It's no it's no proper debate mechanism. I don't feel so. It's a bit. It's a bit restrictive, isn't it? Ah, yeah. Anyway, so Tommy, uh, I'll I'll love you and leave you. I've been to the. The under 17 Glasgow Cup match the other night, so I put a few videos up of the match up at uh, Murray Park, you know, so have a look out oh, for right. them sometime. A couple of good goals, but I say, like 2 2 in the end, final result, you know. But Hi, Tony, good man. Thanks for phoning, Tony, yeah. Uh, have a good weekend, Tommy, yeah. God bless, yeah. Have a good St. Patrick's weekend yourself, yeah. Are you up to much yourself? Just, yeah. just in closing, are you, are you doing anything tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day? Uh, I'll probably just go to Mass, whatever, and go and see my mum. I was. I'm maybe going to go up to uh, up the town tonight and have a pint, you know, or whatever. A pint of Guinness anyway. Just enjoy the banter after the after the victory today and uh, see how it goes, you know. Hopefully, who have we got in the cup coming up soon? 
Dundee United, isn't it? Aye, aye, aye. That's up in the middle aye, of that. Aye, that's, that's a big match, man. We've got to focus for that, you know. Yeah, it'll be a hard one. Well, listen, if you got, you've got my number, give, it, give us a phone call if you're stuck for the left half, your, your jar, if you're thinking me. If you're, if you're, aye, good if man. Very kind, Tommy. Very kind. All right, Tony. God bless, mate. Uh, God bless, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, well, Thanks, Tony Cassidy there. Fine gentleman. And, uh, yes, thank you very much. Right, I'm going to go to work now. And, uh, let the people sing. That's what I say, let the people sing. To criminalise Celtic fans, I think it's just an out... an outrage. And, uh, the real criminals and all this. Criminal bankers. A fascist state. Masonic cover-up, criminality, fraud, corruption, money laundering, everything's been going on here, people are getting away with it. And, uh, increase the peace, fight the power, jockey alarm, seek the truth, reject falsehood, for falsehood is always vanishing. vanishing. Let the people say, God bless.
We've got the H2 in the hands. We're down, we're putting it down there, there we go. And uh, we're hands free, hands free, crack pot, hands free. And uh, the blaster on here. We're in transit now. Hail, hail, the silks are here. It's uh, 8 minutes to 6. And uh, the four ins, what's happened with these four ins? Uh, I think the atmosphere they bring to Celtic Park is very, very good. I think on, a, on away games, uh, with the same applies to... Offensive behaviour of football, thank you. I'm sitting here, whether they've gone quiet, we're still doing it. I'm sitting here talking away. I thought I was going live there, sorry about that. A little bit of silence brought to us by our friends in the Noise Abatement Society. Sorry about that there, a little bit of silence, I do apologise to you. And uh, we've got Britney Spoons. Distinction between political chanting and bigoted chanting. That's one of the issues that the, the Green Brigade are arguing about. Britney Spoons on radio show, Greg. 0500 92 95 00. Live simulcast with BBC Shopbread here in the background. BBC Shopbread. But Kenny, where did you get your fucking. Where did you get your license fee? What kind of driving is that for Manly the other? Oh, here, where is. Down here. It's all about a crackpot drivers here. Crazy, crazy McDougal time here. Unbelievable. Panda minimum. Panda minimum here in Glasgow. 
Oh, we're going live and direct in a tinfoil covered Skoda in a police fascist state. We're in a fascist state, but we're hands free. Do you hear me? We are hands free. Don't criminalise me because I'm hands free. We support the Green Brigade. I'm not in the Green Brigade, but we support all Celtic fans who have been criminalised unjustly. And also that he's a risk. The I mean, fascist you free state. Or the fascist free state. We ain't having none of it. No, not here. End the free Masonic fascist state. End the Masonic cabal. End the Masonic cover up. That's what we're calling for here. Celtic Community Radio says no to the free Masonic fascist state. Uh, we're driving through the streets. We're bringing to an end this broadcast very soon. We're bringing an end to this broadcast. It's five to six on a Sunday and later on tune in, tune in to another Hail Hail Media production coming probably about 7 o'clock Celtic part time that's probably in about another hour's time another hour's time listen to the bulging from Philadelphia he'll be flying high like an eagle after today's game Yes, once again, Celtic many faults, but the way we should look at it now, it's a game of football. We're not entitled to win everything, we're not entitled to have clean sheets at every game, and boy did they make it interesting. So, we got value for money with dodgy defending, dodgy defending, dodgy, even dodgy refereeing decisions, and wonderful Celtic play. We lived up to what Jockstein says, we always know we have to be that bit better. Look at this. Another bugbear of mine. Crack pots you just pull out. I think they're getting right away. Fucking idiots are everywhere. Right, but we're hands free. We're crack pot, we do go hands free here. Yes, Jockstein said we always have to be above. Being you, we had to be above because the decisions, we get nothing, nothing. We get nothing today from what I've seen right to the end. But we dug ourselves out. And uh, right. Oh, you're kidding me, you're having a giraffe. Don't tell me I've shut this. Oof. Right. Right, over and out. We're live and direct here, live and direct here. Tim Fong, come on, Skoda, and we're closing the show down. Good night, God bless. Hail, hail. Chucky Allah, let the people sing.